Okay. Are you hearing me? Okay. Greetings, uh, greetings uh, to all of you from Pristina. It's my pleasure to be with you today, and I'm honored to say you that today with us will be my guest, Professor Christian Foss from uh, Humboldt University in Berlin. Christian Foss is the director of the Institute for Slavic and uh, Hungarian Studies and uh, the head of the Department for uh, Soul Slavic Studies at uh, Humboldt University. The lecture today discusses the culture contribution of the Albanian speaking population in Tito's Yugoslavia under the condition of its um, highly contradictory political treatment, oscillating between repression and uh, overt promotion. The biographies of culture defectors like uh, the poet uh, Esad Mekuli, famous actors uh, Bekim Femiu and Farouk Begoli, or sportman Fadil Bokri. Uh, cr uh, clearly indicate that the riots in Kosovo in 1981 triggered the loss of uh, Yugoslav loyalty among the Albanians. To know more about uh, that, let's invite Professor Foss to present uh, his lecture. Professor, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you so much for the invitation. Let me show you, first of all, a very interesting book I found at the Leipzig Book Fair uh, this March. Um, it's called 25 um, Founders of Culture, Personalities Who Changed the History of Arts in Kosovo. This book is from 23, and I clearly see a shift in um, memory culture in Kosovo after the rule of um, 20 years of the uh, KLA, Ucheka, uh, leaders. Uh, we have a shift, we have a re-evaluation of the Yugoslav past, um, and this is exactly um, what I'm talking about today. Let me open my, um, my PowerPoint presentation. Um, yes, I will talk about cultural history. This means I'm um, not focusing exclusively on, on literature, uh, but I will include uh, pop music and um, um, everyday culture as well. Um, addressing a public in Croatia means, of course, you might recognize um, things uh, talking about post-Yugoslavia. But nevertheless, I think uh, retelling uh, the history um, of Yugoslavia um, brings in new aspects so we can apply post-colonial concepts like mimicry, hybridity. And I think it's an over-focused, under-focused, sorry, it's an under-focused um, approach since very few Slavicists um, speak um, Albanian. And as Elona um, summed up my um, presentation already, I am focusing on the very di divergent and contradictory treatment of subnationalisms on, on Albanianness um, um, under Tito. And my last aspect will be um, today's situation. Uh, what is the position of a second Albanian speaking nation state um, in the Balkans, which is the, the long durée uh, legacy of the Yugoslav frame. Yeah, this is the structure of my talk. I will start with um, history of knowledge. So Miroslav Krleža's um, encyclopedia, especially the second edition, was um, 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 kind of epistemological. Um, 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 safeguarding of a new decentralist and liberal um, concept of Yugoslavia that was realized after the dismissal of Alexander Rankovic, so after 66, and lasting until 81. So this is the golden age of Kosovo we are focusing on, and uh, my, my thesis is there is a strong and, and seizable legacy of these few um, uh, liberal years. So we have Esad Mikuli as a typical um, leftist student from Belgrade who in kind of one man show um, 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 was very supportive of Tito's Yugoslavia in the 50s, 60s and 70s. Then in the liberal time, we have a new generation of authors who today are labeled um, as a literature of refusal, who are very apolitical, who are very formalist, and kind of um, uh, imitate the French nouveau roman. Yeah. And um, as I promised, um, 
um, the approach of uh, popular culture. Uh, I will talk about um, 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 actors, um, politicians, sportsmen, and to go on. So to give a very, very broad um, introduction, um, I come from South Slavic studies. My habilitation was on Slavic minorities in Greece, and I was very interested in the ethnic revival going on in the 90s. And the big question is ethnic revival possible without linguistic revitalization? Yeah, this is uh, an issue also very um, um, vividly discussed among the communities themselves. Um, and for me, it was very interesting to start a comparison between these minorities in Greece and the, Kos the treatment of Kosovars um, um, in Titus Yugoslavia as a typical minority situation, a very repressive um, situation until, let's say, until 66. Um, and then the possibility uh, or the, 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 the extreme shift leading even to promotion and um, um, even positive discrimination of, um, of the Albanians. So I'm using here um, um, a graded scale of rights of minoritized languages and apply this to um, Kosovo. And you see everything possible between overt, covered, prohibition, toleration, permission, promotion, um, has been realized, has been performed in um, Kosovo. And just to, to visualize this, here you see the riots in 81, who ended um, 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 a, a liberal period in Kosovo and um, um, a new policy from Belgrade uh, slowly taking away the, the status of um, autonomy. Yeah, With the big taboo in the background, Kosovo as a seventh republic, Yeah, something the Serbs never could have um, accepted. But at the same time, you see here the National Library of Kosovo built by a Croatian ar architect with federal Yugoslav money. Um, so it's very ambivalent. On the one hand, there is um, a support building an urban modern um, um, center in Pristina and on the other hand, um, political oppression. So just very few sentences on Yugoslavia um, land of the South Slavs and the Albanians. This map seems to insinuate that this um, brotherhood is um, among brothers who all have the same rights, same uh, kind of same territory, but it's not. It, it, so uh, the, the um, brotherhood and unity had a problem because one group was very dominant. Yeah, historically, uh, demographically, at least in the first half of the 20th century, and um, discursively. Yeah, and this in the 90s, as you know, um, led, uh, was, was uh, um, directly mirrored in mi military actions, yeah, in Bosnia, in, um, in Croatia, and then um, in Kosovo. You all know that Kosovo is um, um, memorated, commemorated as the heart of Serbia. We know the Patriarchate um, um, is um, in Pet, today Peja. There is a nice bo bo uh, Polish um, dissertation on this construct of Stara Serbia, of Južna Serbia, uh, meaning today's North Macedonia and um, Kosovo. Yeah? And of course, you know this very famous painting um, from, uh, and also the date is, um, is quite telling because it's exactly at the end of World War I. Kosovka Djevojka, this is not a spelling mistake, but this is um, uh, the dialect, uh, the vernacular uh, variety. Vuk Karadzic used to um, wrote down um, the Junačke Piesme, the, the heroic songs um, of the Battle of Kosovo. And this is a very famous poem, a young girl going to the battlefield um, and finding her dead um, husband and her family. And just to show you the amb ambivalence of um, Yugoslavia, the Croatian artist Ivan Mestrovic um, made a relief. You know, he was he was a Catholic, so 3D is um, allowed for Catholics, not for um, um, Orthodox like Andy Warhol, as you know. You know, Andy Warhol is a Russian, and he, he could only paint. He never could um, uh, do sculptures. And you see, this wonderful um, um, uh, piece of art has been chosen on a banknote. And you see, on this banknote from '68, you see the big, big cr and the crucial problem of Yugoslavia that is it hasn't been discussed until the end. What, what, what is the concept? Is it, as you see in the, uh, on the linguistic level, brotherhood and unity, 
writing in three or four languages, uh, Dinara and uh, um, a national bank and so on. Or do I use, and you see here, this is the visual part of the bank note, a Serbian myth. Yeah, and this is not Yugoslav. It's it's um, claimed um, by the Serbs. Yeah, so this is a very big problem: um, how to promote brotherhood and unity, especially in a region like Kosovo, where people fought until the late forties against um, a new Slavic uh, communist um, regime. Yeah, and if you look, um, I wouldn't say it's a skyline, but if you look at architecture in Pristina, you will see. This monument from 61, symbolizing trinity of Serbian, Albanian, and Montenegrin partisanship as the, the big um, uh, three ethnic groups in, um, in, um, in Kosovo. You see here, it was built in, in the early 60s. Um, uh, there it was much uh, more dominant, you see here on this picture. And uh, the nation building in Pristina on the one hand, used slogans like Yeta Ere, the new life, yeah, which is um, absolutely in line with, with a Soviet um, a new speech, new speak. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the communists allowed um, um, a title for the newspaper, Rilindia. And Rilindia is the Albanian preporot, yeah, rebirth. And you know, it's not Renaissance in, in the sense of rediscovering antiquity in 15th century, but it's, um, um, it's uh, the pretension, the claim to be a nation with a very big old um, history and claiming territory from the medieval um, um, time. Yeah, and this is um, in Greece, it's Byzantium, uh, Bulgaria and Serbia had big, big territories in 14th century. Um, and so this is exclusively national and it's really, um, I, I'm really wondering and I still can't understand why communists allowed this crucial term, Relinia, which doesn't have any, any socialist or communist connotation, but is just nationalist. Yeah, so Yugoslavia from the very beginning was supportive, um, was translating, um, here you see Poesia Shiptara, today it's, it's very pejor pejorative. Uh, but at this time it was more neutral. Here you see a very famous meeting um, um, of Rilindia, which was the second biggest publishing house in Yugoslavia and a newspaper, where Kadare, who died some days ago, was visiting um, um, Pristina. And there are only um, uh, two women um, here, this is Kadare's wife, and this is a very famous uh, journalist, Sania Gashi, who edited the first um, Commun uh, the first feminist uh, journal. And it's not cosm cosmopolitan. It's more like in German, Emma, it's really um, a feminist discourse. And uh, this journalist until today is very active. And she's one of the 25 authors um, in uh, the book I showed you in the beginning. So Tito was a hero. And uh, it's, I think it's not by chance that uh, the riot started immediately after Tito's death. And I told you the um, the the break um, is in '66, um, when um, autonomy of um, um, Kosovo becomes very seizable for the population. There are lots of bilingual publications. Uh, just let me mention this book, Kosovo Nekat Idanas. Um, it's a bilingual edition describing Kosovo in the years 2000s in the sense, forget Switzerland, uh, Kosovo will be much nicer. Yeah, uh, talking about cinema, the statistics on places, uh, cinema places for population and so on. Yeah, and if you go to Pristina, you until today see uh, this uh, urbanization starting in the um, 70s. Here, for example, the famous stadium, Boro and Ramis. I will just, um, um, I will elaborate on Boro and Ramis who are very, very important. Here you see um, another very um, important uh, monument in Mitrovica, today a divided city. The north um, is Serbian, the south is Albanian and the famous Trepcha mines. Uh, so this is the, was the, um, how can we say? Um, the, the most important industrial um, 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 city in, in um, Kosovo um, and, of course, an ethnic melting pot. Yeah. I will start with uh, the encyclopedia and the treatment of Albanians in the encyclopedia. Here you see Krleža, 
um, uh, playing Czech with um, Tito. He was a big friend. And so it's important to know that Krleža um, was able to, to, um, to um, include um, collaborators of non-leftist backgrounds um, as authors for his um, encyclopedia. Yeah, and the first edition is from the 50s uh, to 71. The second edition is very, very important. It has been translated um, also into um, other Yugoslav languages. So here you see um, um, the first edition and the second edition, the Croatian uh, version uh, um, has six volumes. And then there is a Cyrillic, so a Serbian version, Albanian, Hungarian, Macedonian, and Slovenian. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this uh, language policy is already very telling for uh, Kleža's approach, but of course all this in Serbia might be and has been um, perceived as a threat, yeah, as a threat, as a, a loss, uh, as a perceived loss um, of, of uh, power, of control of discourse uh, by Belgrade. Yeah, I mentioned Alexander Rankovic and in the archives in uh, Lexikografsky Zavod, we found this letter, for example, where it stated that, um, um, so the head of secret of, of Udba uh, wants the text to be, um, to be changed. Yeah, so the first edition is really under um, direct censorship of the Minister of Interior. Yeah, and you see him here, Alexander Rankovic, I found this in the book, Kosovo 43 to 63, um, in the power plant in um, Obilich, um, close to, in the Kosovo Polje, close to Pristina. Yeah, and we wrote this article with a colleague from um, Zagreb about this, what we call sub-Yugoslav identity um, uh, building. So Krleža was very supportive of the new Bosnian um, um, nation building of Montenegro. He, so the, the encyclopedia um, in the 80s was the first to talk about a Montenegrin language. Yeah, because um, Brozovic was uh, a very good social linguist from Zagreb, was the only one who was writing about Serbo Croatian. Yeah, and we um, found um, uh, or we focused, uh, we used as a case study the article on Albanians, which in the 80s was scandalized and um, was stopped. And the article was given again to functionaries from the League of Communists who rewrote the article um, about Albania and re-established um, a Serbian uh, paternalistic um, a narrative. I can't go into detail, just to show you, um, um, here's another example. Um, so, um, uh, Encyclopedia of Painting, of uh, Fine Arts, where it's the same question, who is represented um, and um, who, is, who is canonizing? Yeah, the question which is, which is the Yugoslav canon. Is it an addition of um, the different nations? Um, yeah, so the question of canonization and re-canonization is um, very crucial, I think. Okay, I talked about Esad Mekuli, who was editor of Relinia, founder and editor of Yetere, first head of Academy of Sciences, and arts and Kosovo. And his bi biography is very telling. So he could be the first of these borderliners of cultural defectors. Um, as I mentioned them, this is his um, office in, um, in the National Library. And if you look at books he produced with his brother, translating Albanian, Serbo Croatian, and vice versa, you, re you will see that this process comes to an end. In the 60s, we have books published in Belgrade. Then he makes a tour via Sarajevo, Titograd, uh, Zagreb to Ljubljana, but the contact to Belgrade is dying out. So there's a very clear shift among the uh, Kosovar, uh, the Albanian Kosovar um, um, intellectuals and um, um, early, early career investigators to avoid Belgrade and to study in um, Zagreb. And this is the most famous Albanian-Serbian couple, Rami Sadiku, Boro Vukmirovic. Um, uh, so Boro and Ramis, um, they were communist um, um, students in Belgrade, arrested by the Italian um, occupying police in um, 43. Um, the policeman uh, uh, told the Albanian to go home and just to arrest the Serbian communist who was 
perceived as, as more dangerous um, on ethnic basis, but he stayed with his friends and they were both killed. Yeah. So this is the perfect plot for brotherhood and unity, uh, for myth building of a supranational um, 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 partisanship. Yeah. And Mekuli is um, writing a very famous poem, uh, children had to learn by heart, Rami's O Brother, where he is blending this partisan narrative with a national Albanian discourse. Yeah. And this way he could avoid um, censorship. Yeah. So he's um, uh, paying attention to socialist realism, speaks of star of liberation, worker and peasant, so on. But he also speaks about the centuries long dream of the Albanian Pliss. Yeah, please is the the um, uh, what Albanian man? Maybe you you could see it uh, during the um, soccer tournament in um, in Germany, where all Albanian in the stadium were wearing this white um, please. Yeah, and uh, Mekuli writes articles. He was perfectly integrated in the um, here the writers of Union in um, in in Yaitse in seventy seven, even after Tito's death. He was um, giving speeches on TV, but then we have the break, and this is very typical, um, in the 80s, he found out uh, what uh, Ivo Andrich had written during the 30s on Bosnian Muslims, on evacuation of Albanian speakers from Kosovo, and he writes a famous poem, How Could You? And again, typical that this was first published in Croatia. Yeah? How could you? Yeah, Addressing, so disappointed, disillusioned, by um, um, the Yugoslav Serbian um, um, a diplomat and writer Ivo Andrić. So Ivo Andrić is not, um, how can we say, a representative of Tito's Yugoslavia, but nevertheless, um, for Mikuli, it's um, the end of his um, commitment in um, Tito's Yugoslavia. A similar biography is Fadil Hodja, the most influential politician in communist um, Kosovo, uh, who was a politician, but also a very famous writer. Um, his diary of partisan fight was um, made a film and a TV series. And then we have the break, and this is literature of refusal, Recep Chosya. All this has been translated by Relindia Publishing House into, into Serbo-Croatian. Um, you easily can find it. This uh, novel is even... Um, um, translated into German. So I can't go into detail. The second author um, is Anton Paschko, um, who is um, 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 an author uh, that uh, uh, writing, writing um, um, avant-gardist literature uh, of a kind that is totally lacking in Albania at that time. Yeah. So he's... Um, as I said, it's kind of nouveau roman, like Rob Grier or Michel Butor writing in France some years earlier. Yeah, he has been called the James Joyce um, of Kosovo. Yeah, so it's very spectacular, and all this literature, um, unfortunately, is not translated into um, into German. Only one novel of um, um, Chosia. So the question is, is there a Yugoslav literary field for the Kosovars? I would say no. Yeah, in Zagreb, I told you many of many uh, Kosovars in the 80s go to study. Um, but after the, the oppression of Croatian Spring, after 71 um, intellectuals and artists left the Croatian capital, I think Sarajevo was also, um, was of course the capital of uh, Islamska Zajednica, but it was Slavic speaking. Yeah, so there was no space for um, an Albanian speaking um, um, Islamska Zajednica, and um, so there was this um, concurrence and competition between Sarajevo and um, Pristina. And Belgrade, of course, was definitely the first address where uh, young Kosovars would go to study, but only in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. So from the 70s on, um, there is a strong narrative of the Albanian threat disguised as uh, a narrative of um, these Albanian counter uh, revolutions. Yeah. Yes, I will skip this and come to um, um, some biographies to show you um, uh, commitment 
and um, um, the break uh, of this uh, of these relations of some um, artist. Um, it's elite absorption, of course. It's kind of cultural acculturation, but then it's re-ethnicization since the 80s and later since the 90s. And many of these um, um, intellectuals, public intellectuals, became important politicians um, um, or took over positions in ministries or cultural institutions, um, academies, um, after independence. Yeah. So the an, a notion of cultural defectors is taken from a book called uh, White Indians. Yeah, so Indians uh, was a German name for um, the first uh, nations um, in North America some decades ago. Yeah, and I'm applying this to, um, to um, um, these hybrid biographies, starting with Bikim Femiu, the most prominent Yugoslav actor who made career in, um, um, in Hollywood. Here you see uh, him on a picture uh, playing the Od Odyssey, so being um, Odysseus. But in 81, and this is quite early, um, on, on stage in um, uh, Dramsko Pozorište, close to, to Slavia Square in Belgrade, he protested and said, I, I'm protesting against Milosevic and I, I will never stay, uh, uh, show up on stage again in Serbia. Yeah. But he was, um, um, he had married a Serbian wife, had two sons, um, and lived um, um, all his life um, in Belgrade. He has a very famous um, biography written in Serbian in the original. Um, the second, um, when I was in Belgrade last year, it was in all, um, I found it in all windows of libraries because the book can be read as um, a proof to say, Look how well we treated the Albanians. We, I mean the Serbians. Yeah, this is not. This is um, implicit, uh, kind of implicit quote. Um, how well, uh, how wonderful life was for Albanians um, in Tito's Yugoslavia. Yeah, but it's not. Um, so this is Femio with his wife, um, and um, his autobiography. So first we can ask, did he write it um, on his own? It's supportive of Yugoslavia, so I'm quoting here. Um, I only have the um, the Albanian. It's um, translated by B92. Um, so we have to affirm um, Albanian culture in um, Yugoslavia. Yeah. So the book is definitely um, um, supportive of Yugoslavia. Second person, Faruk Begoli, um, um, who was a famous, um, who famous uh, Arctic. Uh, uh, actor played in Beat Kana Neretvi, Dervish is Mert, um, but uh, who also left Belgrade in the late 80s and um, founded a theater and so on. And this is again very typical that the Bon Sauvage, yeah, so um, uh, for, for a Belgrade public, um, it was important uh, or it was, it was quite striking that um, uh, people from this group who were perceived as very primitive and, and back, uh, backwardness of Albanians, um, is part of Jeunesse de Ré, are married with, um, with a, a blonde, attractive um, Serbian woman. And I think this changed a lot um, a mentality. And um, in books like um, When Serbs and Albanians Were Still Loving Each Other, which is a quite silly title, um, it's from the NGO scene. And I think they are uh, over um, stretching um, um, or overusing um, um, these cultural defectors uh, because we don't need the love between Serbs and Albanians, but we just need um, 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 kind of recognition. Yeah, and it's a lot about disappointment, about reproaches of being a traitor. Um, um, so you see here in the last sentence is Dainik uh, Domovine. Um, it's about pride. Um, it's about why do you stay there? Um, so it's um, not easy to be a cultural defector. I continue with Zana Nimani, who was a pop singer. Um, so um, um, a, a, a successful pop singer with Albanian background, who, of course, left 
um, Yugoslavia and since then is living in um, Canada. But unfortunately, I don't have um, too much um, evidence um, about her biography. Ramiz Kalmendi is a very, very important um, intellectual who started as a journalist, uh, was for years chief director, redactor of Relindia, director of theater. Um, and he had a very interesting initiative um, in the 90s to gather um, um, the, the, the clan bosses of uh, the Albanian North and of Kosovo and to say, let's stop um, the Kanun rule and, and the blood feud um, because Serbs only wait for this. Yeah? So the Serbian narrative, the Serbian propaganda was using this, uh, uh, this, this oral, uh, this very archaic um, um, oral rite of Kanun as a proof for a primitivity of and inferiority, cultural inferiority of um, Albanians. Yeah, this was very, and it was successful. Yeah, and Kelmendi also um, was writing texts on um, bilingualism, on um, Serbo-Croatian Albanian bilingualism in Ulcin, you know, Ulcin in the very south of Montenegro, until today has a, has a, um, 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 Albanian minority, which in a local context, of course, is a majority. Um, um, but of course, they um, are under, um, they were in a process of um, much more than in Kosovo and North Macedonia, under a process of um, linguistic um, assimilation. Yeah, and he's uh, making joke jokes with this. You will recognize here Nashke, uh, Upisa, yeah, he's even um, um, yes, uh, marking the, the Slavic words. The last one is Mark Krasnici, also um, educated in Belgrade, working in Sanu, so in the um, Academy of Sciences and Arts, um, but then going back to uh, Pristina and becoming a member of Assembly um, of Kosovo. Yeah. My last example is from sports. Um, so there is a nice article by a good Austrian um, journalist, Franziska Cinderle, who writes, um, who describes um, the end of Yugoslavia by the case study of the soccer club of Trepcha. I told you Trepcha are the, uh, um, the mines um, in, um, in Mitrovica. And here, since early 20th century, we have uh, British technocrats who came here to bring knowledge um, and who brought also soccer. Yeah. And as I said, Mitrovica was an ethnic melting pot, at least a Serbian, um, 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 a Serbian Albanian. And of course, the soccer club was um, ethnically mixed. And, um, it's, and you, know, you know how politicized the soccer scene was. You know, Ratje um, Poce um, uh, na Maximiru and uh, other scenes from um, um, highly politicized um, hooligan scenes and, uh, and also among the, sp the uh, sportsmen themselves. And Fadil Vokri was, um, um, you see here, this is a Serbian um, 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 homepage. Um, he was a very good um, and prominent player. Um, he played first for Pristina, then for Partizan Belgrade. Um, um, he was offered jobs from Turin and Zagreb. Um, he was the best soccer player in 87. Yeah. But of course, he was put under pressure. He was asked, why, why, why are you playing for Partizan Belgrade? And his argument is, it, and it's quite uh, smart. He said, uh, the Partizan always had many fans in the South. Yeah. So this is his justification. And he's um, um, maybe typically for sportsmen, he tries to be very apolitical. Why didn't I engage for the Trepture mine workers? This is the politician's job. Yeah. So my last point, the legacy of um, Kosovo's golden age. Yeah, what is the relation um, between um, Pristina and Tirana? Can we compare this with the Vesis and Ossis? Yeah, so Tirana will um, um, pretend to be the Vesi, to bring, um, uh, to be superior, to be dominant, to be hegemonic, and to import Albanian culture and, of course, the Albanian standard language to Pristina. But it's, uh, this is much too easy. 
because um, um, we could say um, society or even life in the 60s and 70s and maybe even 80s um, in Kosovo was um, was much better than um, in um, in Vahodjas, Albania, because at least in the capital in Pristina we have a westernized urban culture. Yeah, we have pop music. Yeah, the rock scene um, is um, typical ty typical for Yugoslavia. Um, they use until today gag. Yeah, they um, it's it's a kind of uh, so on this linguistic level, it's a kind of anti culture to um, Tirana, and Kosovars may feel humiliated by the Albanian narrative of degenerated, half slavicized Albanians without command of the standard. And I just give you one example. Uh, no, this is a book I won't go into detail, just to show you on, on pop culture. Um, you see all these, these are the absolute superstars, um, um, uh, Albanian superstars, we can say, but all of them are from Kosovo. Yeah, you know, these two play for Jaka and Shatiri. They play for Switzerland, but they are Kosovars. This is Rita Ora, and this is Dua Lipa. And this is now on the next slide, I show you the Yugoslav framing because their grandfathers had been, so this is the grandfather of Dua Lipa and of uh, Rita Ora. The grandfathers were part of a very small um, Albanian elite um, who were uh, here having um, a dinner in uh, in a cafe in um, in Pet. Um, so um, Sahatiu was um, producing films. Um, so it was in in the in the closest circle of um, of um, of Tito's um, um, surrounding, so to say. Yeah, and maybe you know Sahat uh, Saat. Um, so the the um, art, artist name of Rita Ora is a translation of Sahat Chiu. Yeah, because Sahat is uh, the 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 hour or the watch, and Sahat Chi is the the watchmaker. Yeah, and the U is a postponed article, but I won't go into um, linguistic details here. Um, just to um, show you how. Um, um, how uh, important this uh, this Yugoslav imprint um, and the Yugoslav legacy is today for Kosovar um, self-understanding and self-positioning as a second Albanian-speaking nation. Here is an interesting book written by a Macedonian Albanian. It's called The Border, Kufiri. Yeah, and it's a love story between um, a Macedonian Albanian and an Albanian Albanian woman. They cross many borders, uh, go to um, different parts of um, uh, the Albanian-speaking Balkans, and um, very openly um, talk about um, hetero stereotypes. Yeah, okay, I can't go um, into detail. I just show you this at the end. Um, there is a, um, and this is again typical. It's a young author who returned from the United States. Um, he lives in Pristina. Um, he's teaching uh, creative writing, and he wrote uh, comics and science fiction, like Arnautistan Noir. Yeah. So it's um, you see, this is here the League um, of Prizren, uh, shown here as kind of mecca. Um, and it's playing in 2050. Yeah, so it's a, a dystopia. Uh, like the other one, a serialized ethno cyberpunk novel. And you see, this kind of um, youth urban subculture is um, very vital in Pristina. Yeah. Um, so last year there was um, um, the the um, the manifesta. Um, which is um, an art festival, a moving touring art festival, um, celebrating um, um, urban Pristina. And all this is lacking in Tirana. Yeah? So the, the Albanian Kosovar relations um, are still um, um, to be negotiated. And uh, maybe the last author I can mention here is Patim Statovci, a young a queer author who writes in Finnish because his family um, left during the 90s to um, 
Helsinki, and he writes books like Maquette Yugoslavia, and he even writes a very provocative novel, a gay love story between a Serb and an Albanian during the 90s and 2000s. Um, and this is still um, um, of a literary quality um, and uh, promoting the LGBTQ um, ideology. Uh, this is a phenomenon where I clearly would say we wouldn't find this in Tirana. Yeah? So I, I, I would include authors like Statovci in, in this, um, how can we say, in, 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 uh, in, under this label of post-Yugoslav legacy. Okay, thanks for your attention and um, I will be glad to discuss uh, this with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Very interesting topics. And uh, now it's the turn of the question. Go ahead with the question. Can you close the sharing? I stopped my PowerPoint. Huh? Yeah, can you stop the, the, the sharing? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And all participants are free. Maybe I can break the, the ice. Thank uh, you so much, Christian. Uh, we desperately need uh, these kind of analysis and comparative uh, studies, uh, not only in terms of going through arts, uh, but also uh, in uh, science, in research, in academic uh, uh, setting. Um, the Center for Advanced Studies uh, is actually the uh, very rare, if not only, uh, institution uh, looking forward to uh, build uh, broken bridges. When I say this metaphor is uh, uh, actually, I, I want to confirm that this very fellowship we are having uh, in the center uh, is also the, the uh, product of uh, our uh, intention uh, to uh, move forward and and go on uh, with the cultural and scientific uh, exchange. Um, we, uh, and our fellows know this uh, very well, uh, we uh, actually uh, initiated a network of uh, regional centers for advanced studies, starting with the Skopje and then uh, Tirana and Pristine, in Belgrade and Sarajevo and Podgorica, uh, um, Zagreb is not included. We are uh, in Rijeka uh, representing Croatia and Slovenia. It is not to um, go on uh, and uh, do this in a nostalgic way, but constructively uh, enabling Southeast European context that uh, desperately needs uh, this kind of a revival of a cultural setting. Uh, all all uh, these uh, references you were mentioning, uh, as I'm uh, in a certain age, I know them very well. And I, kn I knew uh, Zana Nimani as a, as a friend. So, wow. and I, as, as I said, I'm a kind of a, Two, uh, one, one, uh, my my one leg is in Yugoslavia, as I was born in Yugoslavia, and one is uh, in the contemporary world. This is uh, essential, and I may also confirm what you said. Uh, the uh, Pristina scene is so so uh, open to uh, the European context more than Tirana. Hmm? We also hosted Lea Yipi and we also know her work 
which is essential, but she's the one. And we more we, we need more, more context to, to do this. So I just wanted my comment was in, in direction of, of uh confirming uh your work and uh, the work that we can do uh in uh as well, presenting the queer scene, and I work a lot with with uh, artists in in uh, Pristina and in Skopje and in Tirana and in uh, Podgorica, and we are going even souther to Thessaloniki, because this is what we need for Southeast Europe. And you, as a scholar coming from uh, Germany, you know what does this mean to cover this. Uh, part of the Europe that is often considered as a global South as well. Uh, I myself was included in initiatives uh, considering this as a global South. And we had also, uh, so this is part of, of taking from this uh, period after Second World War, the best of the period, we, we are also uh, uh, evoking and working with people that uh, worked uh, in uh, the non-alignment uh, um, movement with the uh, with the uh, scientists and researchers from India, from uh, Egypt, from Africa, uh, different parts of Africa. So uh, there is a lot to discover. There is a lot to work on, and uh, uh, I thank you again. This is a very nice and our presentation, your presentation will be online and I'm certain that it will attract more attention because we need this. And I'm just now uh, inviting uh, all people here, but also uh, those future um, mm, uh, spectators of, of the YouTube to uh, address us and uh, uh, provide uh, their input on, on all that you uh, presented here. Thank you so much, Christian. Yeah, thanks for the comment. Um, I um, absolutely agree with you. Um, it's important um, to be aware of, I think, of the Yugoslav frame, but of course also of the Balkan frame. Yeah, so if, uh, let's say, we talk about North Macedonia, um, um, young scholars should be able to um, to um, identify the Yugoslav frame and um, um, the, the 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 comparability, but also to see, let's say, comparison to Greece, to Bulgaria, and and other parts. And some we two weeks ago, I had um, an international summer school here. It was financed by the French German Youth Office, which strongly supported and performed the re reconciliation after World War II. And the idea was um, somehow to internationalize the Bulgarian uh, Macedonian conflict going on right now about um, history, identity, language, you know, and this is paralyzing the whole um, EU accession process of the Western Balkans. And the Macedonian Bulgarian issue to a certain degree is comparable. So we have the Macedonians, we can say, okay, there is some twin. I told them you have to accept you have twins. You have, you speak Balkan Slavic languages. Your language is definitely different from Croatian and Serbian. It's not identical and you have different standards, but this is, um, 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 uh, this is similar. Uh, but Bulgaria was a very closed uh, country, somehow comparable to um, to Enver Hoxha's Albania or to German GDR um, and North Macedonia took part in a country that was at least for some decades um, liberal, was allowing westernized culture, was allowing people to go and buy jeans in, um, in Trieste. Yeah? And of course, there is a difference because Yugoslavia supported, strongly supported the Macedonian nation building, which they did not do for the Kosovars. Yeah, but nevertheless, I think it's it's similar, and people should um, understand this: that being for some decades in a totally different um, society um, will leave traces. Yeah, we have the notion of habitus and of long durée and legacy, and in Germany, you have the same. If you look at the uh, last German elections, you will see that the whole of former GDR was voting in majority 
for the new right-wing populist fascists. Um, and the West was voting for the established um, 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 big parties like Christ Democrats. Yeah. So um, I think the Yugoslav, without being nostalgic in any way, I'm not, I have no, fun, my, my wife is Greek. I don't have any familiar contacts or um, empathy for uh, the former Yugoslavs, but I think it's very important um, to be aware of this common frame. It's a common experience. It's a communicative memory. Yeah. And we should be able to analyze this. And, and to add to this, uh, because uh, um, now I'm I'm thinking of of European uh, whiteness uh, model uh, and and thinking of uh, this intersectionally this cultural nod of uh, inviting race uh, also in in the discourse and uh, uh, considering. Uh, all the paradoxes that we went through. Uh, so the, it's it's not uh, only a possibility to analyze any of these aspects through ideology or through uh, uh, actually uh, politics of identity, but uh, in, a, in a constructive way, uh, find uh, similarities within the differences. So, uh, and for the sake of the epistemic justice uh, to move forward. So uh, when I uh, present uh, the, the very idea of the Center for Advanced Studies and what we are doing as regional centers for advanced studies, it's in this direction, uh, not putting the uh, attention or the, the, not stressing one element in all these uh, uh, complexity as a na nation or language or uh, uh, cultural politics, but rather doing uh, rhizomic structure of putting all this together and considering it uh, within this. Uh, you yourself, you said about the, the your uh, Greece, Greek uh, uh, wife and uh, how it mixes. So thinking of affective uh, affinities that can possibly overcome all the differences that are making us uh, struggle uh, with each other. There is always a much more space to comparison into uh, complementarities than to differences. Uh, thank you for your time and thank you others. Uh, if there are any other questions, I'm, I'm going to uh, just uh, uh, let you uh, present uh, your uh, comments as well. Thank you, Tanya. Yes, Mirko. Uh Hello, everyone. I apologize for being a little bit uh, late. I will just present. Maybe people don't know me. I'm a, a PhD researcher in Germany, history of Southeast Europe. Uh, now, I got some inspiration. It might have been covered. I apologize if it was. Uh, uh, I got inspiration from those ideas of Yugoslav context and comparison. And I thought if you uh, consider the opportunity not to actually compare it with North Macedonia, Macedonian context, but more with context of Vojvodina, considering how important the uh, television in Novi Sad or some local medias in Vojvodina were for cultural production in Hungarian, Romanian, Slovak at certain time, when those types of production were not actually existing in those countries. This is just some, you know, ideas that I have right now. And if you would like maybe to comment a little bit on that. Um, some months ago, I was um, a reviewer in a PhD process at um, Poznan University. So Poland has an excellent uh, South Slavic and, and also Albanian um, um, uh, scholarship. And this was a PhD comparing Hungarian minority writers in Vojvodina, um, like Laszlo Wegel or others, and um, writers in Sanjak, yeah, who who are very strongly um, um, following a Bosniak tradition, and there was even one author who picked up the Illyrian myths, yeah, which in 19th century was very strong in Croatia, uh, which today in 20th century was very strong uh, or is very strong for Albania, and now is used in Sanjak for Bosniaks 
to to um, uh, to create distinctiveness from a Serbian minor majority. Yeah, but I'm not an expert for um, for um, um, for Vojvodina, but it's very interesting to 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 compare um, um, multiculturalism, multilingualism in the south in the southern Balkans. So in this Byzantine Ottoman period, where I'm very familiar with the old Habsburg. Yeah, and you know Vojvodina is uh, southern Hungary, and this is uh, this this is again very multi-ethnic um, until today. Um, but I, I think followed quite different rules. Yeah. Yes, and I think uh, maybe uh, North Macedonia, it's an example of uh, multilingualism or multiculturalism. And uh, uh, I think uh, we have to do much more in, uh, in this context not only with uh, North Macedonia, but with, uh, with the other countries that uh, are, in, are in borders, in my opinion. Yes, uh, another question by participants? Everything is clear. <laughs> hmm. Yes, George? Uh, hello, apologies for not having the, the camera on. Um, but also, yeah, I, I also introduced myself given that um, it, it's probably relevant. I'm also a PhD student at Humboldt, actually, with Hannes Granditz. Oh, okay. Um, so I think we, could, we should probably converse a little more after the call. <laughs> but uh, my question right now would just be about uh, what is the, how does it, what is the Albanian cultural responses in Kosovo to Yugoslav internationalism? So the sort of non-aligned movement and the general internationalist cultural production in Yugoslavia, um, as far as I know, I don't know anything about how the, the sort of Albanian speaking population responded to this. Um, so I'd be interested to see how much that came up in what you've seen. Um, that's a very good question, and I know that the non-alignment, uh, I know what Jelena Juranovic in Vienna is doing right now. Um, it's, it's an interesting topic, but this is not my field of research. I'm not from um, political sciences. Um, and, and I said the, the agenda um, or the political discussion, and this is what, what let's say, let's triggered the riots in 81, was the political um, uh, the political um, 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 demand to become um, the seventh republic in Tito's Yugoslavia, but uh, this did not imply any participation in, in foreign policy. So I think, and I don't think, um, but I'm not the expert, I'm, I'm stressing this, that um, Albanian um, Kosovars um, were contributing to shape um, the non-alignment movement or foreign policy of of Tito's Yugoslavia, yeah, I, I think they didn't participate in, in in the ministries in Belgrade, and I think for Kosovo this was not an issue. Yeah, I think the the open borders and so the, to, to become Gastarbeiter in Germany, this was a very important, especially for for the and you know there was a big um, emigration waves in in the fifties from the Muslim speaking regions, um, mostly to Turkey. And, and then many, many um, 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 Muslims from today's North, North Macedonia, Sanjak, Kosovo, went to West Germany. Yeah. But um, so I, I'm not really the expert to answer your question, but it's very interesting. Thank you. Another question from the floor? Okay, if you have if you don't have any questions, I thank you, all of you. Thank you for the participation today. Thank you, Professor Foss. Thank you, Sanya. Yeah, maybe I, I can say you give me one minute uh, for Please. a statement. So um, if you ask me where is uh, Kosovo culture of the kind I, I try to explain in a historical context is most visible and successful, then I would definitely say in cinema. And maybe you heard about the film Hive. 
And this is a very, very strong feminist uh, voice um, from the Balkans. The film Hive, uh, who didn't win an Oscar, but was very close to win um, an Oscar. There is a film Zana. There is a film Vera Dreams of the Sea. Vera Andron Detin. And these are all young, um, young um, um, uh, directors, female directors from Kosovo, who contribute to um, to shape um, perceptions of the whole region. Yeah. So, if you have time, just try to find these films. Maybe start with Zana and Hive. Hive, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good example, Hive. Yes. Thank you. Hive is an extraordinary poetic and beautiful. Uh, women's uh, film, and I also uh, recommended everybody to to see it. It's very uh, very uh, good movie. I'm doing too much today. Thank you very much for everybody and Tina. This this will this will be our session today. Uh, Elona, thanks a lot. Uh, you brought us uh, an extraordinary guest and Chris, 